So before we can even jump into actually building a grid, let's talk about some of the basics that impact all the different decisions surrounding sizing, measuring, and spacing. The first thing, base units. What is a base unit? This is our starting point. This is ground zero. Let's define a base unit. Now, this is what defines what every single measurement will be a multiple of. Why? This makes our designs consistent, improves how we hand off to developers, and reduces the amount of decisions we need to make as a designer. So what should you set your base unit to? I use an 8 pixel base unit because it makes scaling for a variety of devices really easy. Most screen sizes are divisible by 8. It's also divisible by itself. You know, 8 divided by 2 equals 4, 8 divided by 4 equals 2. There are even 4 pixels, 5 pixels, 6 pixels, and even 10 pixel increments. There is no wrong answer here. Like I said, I like using 8 pixels and spacing icons by a 4 pixel half step. Right here we have an 8 pixel base unit. And you can see it's spaced out to 16, 24, 32, and so on and so forth. Up next is sizing. Now all UI elements should be measured in increments of our base unit. This helps us with a bunch of things like clear alignment, consistency, and hierarchy. Let's take a look at the difference between the two here. One's using an 8 pixel base unit, the other one isn't really using anything, and there's just no rhythm. You know, it may seem minuscule, but if I were checking out in a product or a website, and I came across a credit card input like this, paired with all these different UI elements, I would think twice about entering my information. Padding. This is the space between all of our elements, and you guessed it, it is measured based off of our base unit. This makes spacing consistent and readable to our users. Think about this card over here. All elements are spaced using increments from an 8 pixel base unit. It creates uniformity. We have 16 pixels on this side, 16 pixels over here. We got 16 pixels here. You see on this grid on the bottom, these rows, which we'll get into soon, we got four pixels, four pixels, four pixels. Next is layout. So what do all these lines and boxes mean? What are they? These are some questions you may be asking. Let's talk about the anatomy of a grid. All grids are made up of three key things, columns, gutters, and margins. The first one is columns. Let's cover that. Our vertical blocks right here that span left to right. So right here on this page, we got a little four column grid. And generally the column width won't change, but the number of columns change from 12 on desktop, maybe eight to tablet. Some people like four on mobile. I mean, you can use anything you want. I like to use six on mobile because it gives me a flexibility to place three elements in a row on the screen. I even like to use eight on mobile. Like I said, if you want to hang things off the screen, we'll see that later on, but nothing is set in stone. Gutters. This is the white space right here, right between columns. They're dedicated based off of your base unit. So some designs will increase that size as you scale up or decrease it as you scale down. Other grids can stay fixed. It's not really set in stone. So right over here, this is probably like a 16 pixel gutter based off of a eight pixel base unit. Margins are the white space between the edge of your column and the edge of your frame. You can combine all these elements to build different types of grids. The manuscript grid, we saw this before, kind of looks like a grid for a manuscript, right? Well, they can be useful for defining margins and for large blocks of text. This is the most popular one, the column grid. Kind of looks uh, like the grids you see today, kind of what we've shown off. Now, these are the types of grids we mostly use, and these columns are spaced evenly, and that is where we start to align our content. Most grids utilize 12 columns, and you may be asking, well, why 12? Well, 12 columns can be divided into halves, thirds, fourths, and sixths. This helps for designing for responsive screens. The modular grid. This is a variation of the column grid, we saw before. You'll notice that they have both vertical and horizontal rows. So we have vertical columns going left to right, horizontal rows going top to bottom. And this creates these modules that provide some additional layout options for a single or larger box. The baseline grid. Now this one's important. I use this one all the time as well. I like to couple this with my column grid. They consist of these horizontal rows that you see here from top to bottom. And these provide guidance for typography and UI elements. They create vertical rhythm. And think of when you were in school and you used to write on a piece of paper. 
Yeah, it's similar to that. And yes, it's based off of your base unit. I like to use a four pixel baseline grid. Now, placing typography on a baseline grid, you use line height. And this is that bounding box right around your type. So say your font size is something like 16 pixels. You know, your line height could be something like 24 pixels. We have maybe like a 40 pixel typeset over here for the headline and our font size for the headline. And for the line height, we have something like 48 pixels. So multiply by eight and on that baseline grid. So we got four pixel here, four pixel here. So we got eight pixel spacing between the top and the bottom here. And we got 12 between the subheader and the copy. So this creates this vertical rhythm that really helps to create consistency throughout your whole piece. Let's jump into responsive grids in Figma.